Hello! Welcome to Black History Month goodie bag number 27! Yes, we are almost done. Can you believe it? 31 will be around the corner. So thank you for hanging in there if you've been watching and, and reading all that I've been posting. Thanks a lot. I'm really excited about today's goodie bag. It happens to be the very first British black female bishop and her name is Rose Hudson Wilkin. Now, when I first came across her, because I hadn't heard of her before coming to Britain, but when I first came across her, it was in a Vogue magazine. Now, I hadn't had a Vogue magazine in eons of time, but my husband happened to be doing um, temporary work at a magazine factory, and he saw a black woman on the cover, and he was just like, let me bring this for my wife. <laughs> And that is amazing because I was totally going through this season where I'm like, oh, I miss my black people, looking everywhere for black people. Oh, I spotted one, you know, like that type of thing. And so when he gave me this, I was just like, yes, thank you, honey. And it had this article of this woman in it. Now, first of all, that it had this, um, a black um, bishop that was amazing in itself, but it was also amazing that it was in a Vogue magazine, right? Like, I, again, I said, like, I hadn't seen a Vogue magazine in, like, forever. I'd always liked Vogue because I felt like the pictures were beautiful, like they were art. And I, I do like fashion. I believe fashion is creative and artistic. So to have this woman in it was just amazing for me. And not just that, but to take it a step forward like she was talking about Jesus in a Vogue magazine hello the picture I love the picture when I saw that we were fearfully and wonderfully made hello straight from the Bible yes, yes. women are fearfully and wonderfully made black, black women are fearfully and wonderfully made and that this was in a, a Vogue magazine British Vogue I just thought that that was completely amazing I also thought it was amazing because she herself had written this article. She was just like, no, I'm going to take this in my own hands and I'm going to write what I want to be said. I thought that that was amazing. And most of all, the thing that really stuck with me, I mean, those things stuck with me, but the final thing that I'm going to talk about in a couple points within this that stuck with me is that she was talking about her journey, her journey as a black woman into the role in which she was she now found herself as a bishop um, and I found that it was this was before the George Floyd thing but I just find found that she was bringing up issues that were that were preparing my heart for when the George Floyd thing came about um, just talking about the inequalities and and some of the the different injustices that were out there and some of the things that she had seen and experienced and here she was as the first black female and it, it was just really powerful in in that sense but I want to talk about um, I think in looking at my notes um, that there are three things that I found really really interesting while she talked about her journey and again, let me read the title, the title of this article, because that's what I'm pulling from today, this article um, that I, I found the article. I couldn't find my magazine for some reason. I have no idea where the magazine went. Um, I know it's in here. I know I wanted to save it, but I couldn't find it. So I had to look it up on the internet. But the title is Force for Change, Rose Hudson Wilkin on Becoming Britain's First Black Female Bishop. And this was written in January of 2020. So the first quote that I wanted to share from this article that I found so amazing and so true that I think that a lot of people, this is perhaps, when someone mentioned this term, unconscious bias to me, this is perhaps where it shows up that people just don't realize, white people don't realize that these are perhaps some prejudices or some biases that they're holding that they don't even realize. As it seems in this quote that I'm getting ready to share with you, and it's pretty short, and I'll read it, and it happened about three years um, 
uh, let's see, no, she was, or this was after she had been ordained as a priest. She remembers saying to a group of lay and ordained people while working as a diocesan officer. Sorry if I butchered that word. <laughs> but here's the quote now, I'll read it for you. And this is her speaking. If you had a vacancy and I applied for it, would you consider me? One woman popped her hand up and said, but why would we? We don't have any black people here. I laughed. Oh my goodness, I said. Isn't it interesting that white priests can go to Africa, Asia, to our inner cities. They can minister to everybody, but somehow black priests are only allowed to minister to black people and then left it at that for them to ponder. I think that that was amazing and that she saw it and that she handled it with grace and that she just brought something up just to their attention. Like, look, do you hear what you're saying? Do you realize what you're saying? And, and, and oftentimes, sometimes we don't. We're just speaking from our experience. We're just, we're speaking and, and, and that's okay to share, but then to be open to hearing the question that comes like, okay, I'm gonna to respond to what you just said because I don't even think that you realize. And that she said, isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting that white people can go serve and minister to all of these different people? But a black person is only thought of as being able to minister to black people very interesting indeed and I hands up and clapping for her that she would able to address it in such a gentle and gracious manner that's awesome and when I hear the word unconscious bias I think that that's it that's it and it's just being made aware of the thoughts that you have like why is it I would probably ask why is it that only white people can minister to everybody but black people can only minister to black people why is that and number two what i loved about the article is that she kept her eye on the prize yes, yes. she did she kept her eye on the prize she didn't need to prove herself to anyone i love the fact that she was full of confidence she'd been raised in jamaica and so she'd been raised in an environment where she saw she saw herself, she saw people who look like her in lots of different careers. So she came over here in, with confidence. And so when people looked at her and you know, questioned or whatever, she knew who she was. She had confidence and she didn't let anyone steer her off her path. Awesome. awesome. Number three, and out of all of them, is the most powerful for me. Well, they're they're similar, but this is so good. It's so good. Hold on to your seats because she said people would sometimes ask her why she stayed. Why she stayed? Why did she endure all of these pushbacks, all of these questions, all, all of these uh, dismissals or people overlooking her or looking down upon her or doubting her abilities? Why did she stay? And she would reply that she stayed because she knew who called her. <laughs> Hallelujah. She knew who that is so good, isn't it? It's so good. God, when you know who calls you, she knew that God called her to this role and to this position, and that's what she focused on. That's what she focused on, just like Peter. When he got out of the boat and he was looking at Jesus, he was walking on that water, waves crashing all beside him. It wasn't until he started looking at the waves that he started to sink. Well, she wasn't sinking. She wasn't looking at the waves. She was looking at Jesus. And that is what was so important. She knew who called her. She wasn't worried about what people had to say. She wasn't. She was going for an audience of one. 
that was Jesus. That's what she was doing, and she knew that the call had been put in her heart from her Father God in heaven, and that is who she was pursuing. And that is why I love this article. It's all about her overcoming. It's all about her staying positive. She didn't have to, like, put people down. Even in the article, it talked about, like, one instance when she was really hurt, and it broke her, and she even cried, but then she kept moving. She kept moving on. So it's not that she didn't feel pain. It's that she didn't allow it to stop her from moving. <laughs> and because of that, she was one of the first women to be ordained. She was the first black priest to be the chaplain to the queen and to the speaker of the House of Commons. And finally, the first black woman to be a bishop in the Church of England, all because she kept her eye on the one who called her. Who are you looking at? Hmm? Make sure it's the right person. All right. Now, I hope you enjoyed today's goodie bag. If you did, be sure to share because everyone enjoys a goodie bag. Thank you for coming. Remember to be blessed, be beautiful, and be the light. Bye.